In this video, we're going to go through uh, the shapes of data sets and how to measure it by getting Z scores, figuring out whether they're outliers, and talking about the skewedness. Okay. Uh, so here, right here, we've got an image of an outlier far beyond the data set. This data is quite symmetric. This one is, uh, well, symmetric, but it has a um, has this bimodal tendency. This one's got an outlier to the left. Uh, this one is skewed to the right. That one's skewed to the left. So we'll talk about all of those types of possibilities in this video. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's calculate Z scores. And first of all, why do we get them? Um, so we get them to calculate the number of standard deviations a data value is from the mean. The word itself, standard, kind of tells you we want a standard measure. Um, so for any data set, the Z score, the value of the Z score has the same meaning as the value of the Z score in any other data set. We always take the data compared to the mean divided by the standard deviation. And if the Z score is beyond three or below negative three, it's an outlier um, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, the larger the absolute value of the Z as well, the further the data is from the mean. That's always true. Uh, so here is our Z square formula. Take your actual X value minus from it your average, divide by your standard deviation. Okay, and again, uh, X is our, sorry, X bar is our sample mean. Okay, and S is our sample standard deviation. And X itself again is the data value. Okay, and uh, for example here, let's uh, take a mean of 490, standard deviation of 100. Z score uh, for a test score of 620 would be the following. So uh, the 620 is our X value, the 490 is our X bar, our mean, the 100 is our standard deviation, which is S. That gives us a Z score of 1.3. That 1.3, is that good or bad? Well, it's not an outlier because the 1.3 standard deviations is uh, not above three and not below a minus three. So yeah, this person is above average, uh, not incredibly above average, but definitely above average with their score. Uh, okay, next thing to talk about are shapes of distributions. Uh, first one to look at is skewedness. It's the measure of the extent to which data values are not symmetric. Um, we're going to talk more about that in a minute and how to measure that. Kurtosis is the next um, measure to describe the shape. It's the measure of the peakedness of the curve of the distribution. So how sharply the curve rises approaching the center of the distribution. So you could have a very sharp peak or you could have a very smooth peak. Um, okay. So here, let's talk again about skewedness. So if the data is left skewed, then the mean is below the median. What that means is there's some very small values pulling the average or the mean down. Don't forget your median is your exact middle value of your data. If you are right skewed, then your median, or for, sorry, let's say it this way, your mean is above your median. Uh, there are some large values pulling the um, the average up above, above the middle point. If your data is perfectly symmetric, then the mean and the median are exactly equal. And in this case, with this distribution, we would say it's probably normally distributed or bell-shaped. Sure looks like it. It's symmetric and it has this bell-shaped curve. Um, the skewedness statistic for each of these, this skewedness statistic for left skewed is zero, below zero. Uh, for the perfectly symmetric case, it's exactly zero. For a right skewed case, it will be above zero. And just to finish um, this topic, let's talk about using the descriptive stats uh, in the data analysis tool pack in Excel. Let's say this is our data set. Here is all that that descriptive stats can output for us. Let's give this a shot now. So let's pull that up in Excel. Let's say this is our host price data. Well, just for practice, let's also get our Z scores for this. So let's just go get our mean and our standard deviation uh, separately first. We will get them again later, but let's just go calculate them once here. So our mean is the 600,000, the standard deviation. Use the dot S, always use the dot S when in doubt. Um, is that, okay, so Z scores to calculate those 
it's your actual data value minus your mean um, divide by your standard deviation. Note, don't forget your brackets on the numerator here, and don't forget to lock your reference to your mean and your standard deviation so that you can just copy this formula down. Okay, question for you, are there any outliers when you look at these z-scores? And the answer is no, since there are no z-scores above 3 or below minus 3. Okay, then let's finish with generating this output, which um, decision analysis generates for us. So when we have our data set here, you can go into data and data analysis. And if you don't have it, just Google how to add it. Uh, it's just under options and add-ins, although it depends whether you have a Mac or a PC. So just Google that. Um, once you do have it, it's under the data tab. Um, go to data analysis, descriptive stats, click OK. And my input range here will be this data set. You can highlight the title as well, if you would like. Uh, labels in the first rows include that if you highlight the title. You leave it as columns if you've organized your data down a column. Switch it to rows if you organized your data across a row. Um, and the output range, I am just going to put it right here. Okay, you can put it anywhere you want or have Excel make a new worksheet for you. And you must include the summary stats here. You can also uh, do your confidence levels for your mean. I'm just going to skip that and just do my summary stats for now. Click OK, and here we are. So here are the summary stats. We've got our mean, standard error, median mode, standard deviation. So all of the things we're calculating today. And it also talks about our skewedness. So the skewedness is 2. Um, so that is greater than 0. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we are skewed to the right. How else could we have spotted that? Well, look at your mean and look at your median. Okay, and what do we notice about them? The mean is much, much larger than the median. Okay, so we are skewed to the right if the mean is larger than the median, and we can also tell that because our skewedness um, is greater than zero. Okay, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.